are here to present our case study that focused on upper respiratory tract, which entitled, Whoops, I Did It Again, by Bernatella Spears. Presented by Group 1, Bulagsak, Caropo, Comendador K, Garbanzos, and Celiote. A 28 years old woman present to the Southwestern Medical Center emergency room with a dry hacking cough. She indicates that she had the cough for approximately five weeks and has had a low grade fever at times, but never higher than 38 degrees Celsius. She states that she has terrible coughing spells where it is difficult to stop and her sleep is often interrupted by coughing. Also, she has shortness of breath when she lies down. During the physical examination, the patient has several episodes of numerous rapid coughs, each followed by an inspiratory effort that include a high pitch whoop. Her vital signs include a temperature of 37.5 degrees Celsius pulse rate of 160 beats per minute, minute and respiratory rate of 72 per minute. She confirms that she has never received a pertosis booster vaccine and is currently not on antimicrobial therapy. Based on the patient's symptoms and the nature and history of the cough, the resident suspects whooping cough. He orders a complete blood count, nas nasopharyngeal culture, serological test, and the ch chest x-ray. Results of the blood smears show increased WBC count with absolute lymphocytosis, while the culture of nasopharyngeal swab and gram stain is seen in figure one. Moreover, a serological test revealed positive on IgA and IgG. Figure one on the left side. Okay, so figure one, as seen on the left side of your screen, is our nasopharyngeal culture using Bordet Gengo agar. Colonies are small and shiny and resemble mercury drops. On the right is the gram stain smear shows gram negative cocoa bacilli. So for our patient's general information, we decided to name our patient Jane Doe since the actual name of the patient was not stated in the case study. The age for the patient is 28 years old and the sex is female. For subject and objective information, the chief complaint um, Several episodes of numerous rapid coughs followed by an inspiratory effort, including a high-pitched woof for approximately five weeks already. So for other signs and symptoms, there is shortness of breath when lying down and low-grade fever at times, but does not exceed beyond 38 degrees Celsius. For other concerns, the patient experienced interrupted sleep due to persistent coughing at night. So for history of present illness, the, during the catheral stage, the catheral stage is the first stage of um, Bordetella pertosis infection or whooping cough, which lasts for about two weeks. Uh, the patient experienced terrible coughing spells, low grade fever and shortness of breath upon lying down. So during the physical examination of the patient, several episodes of numerous rapid coughs, each followed by an inspiratory effort, including high pitch woo. This time, it was already five weeks of cough duration experienced by the patient. The vital signs, uh, temperature is about 37.5 degrees Celsius, pulse rate 160 beats per minute, and respiratory rate of 72 beats per minute. Past medical history, no vaccine of Bordetella pertosis, family history, undisclosed, 
social and drug history undisclosed, comorbidities undisclosed. For the physical examination, patient has numerous rapid cough which followed by an inspiratory effort which means that she is having a difficulty whenever she breathes in, and this also includes a high pitch whoop. For her vital signs, <clears throat> she has a temperature of 37.5 degrees Celsius, a pulse rate of 160 beats per minute, and a respiratory rate of 72 per minute. The pertinent lab shows the result of blood smear, which is increased WBC count, with a range of 16,000 to 30,000 per microliter with absolute lymphocytosis, and it is beyond the normal range of lymphocyte, lymphocyte count. The gram stain shows gram-negative cocobacilli, and using the Borde Jenggu agar, colonies are small and shiny, also resembles mercury drops. The serologic test, or ELISA, is positive IgA and positive IgG. The differential diagnosis is COVID-19, asthma, gastroesophageal reflex disorder, epiglottitis, whooping cough, or pertosis. So here is the flow chart of our diagnosis. So the chief complaint is dry hacking cough, which is approximately for five weeks already. So to consider are pneumonia, bronchitis, COVID-19, asthma, gastroesophageal reflux disorder, epiglottitis, whooping cough, or pertosis. So we're only going to focus on upper respiratory tract infection. So we're only going to consider the COVID-19, asthma, gastroesophageal reflux disorder, epiglottitis, and whooping cough or pertosis. So the physical examination of the patient is the patient has 37 degrees Celsius, which is a low-grade fever, 160 beat per minute. That is higher than the normal range of 60 to 100 beat per minute. Also, the respiratory rate of the patient is 7 per minute. Also, it is a higher than the normal range of 12 to 16 per minute. During the physical examination, the patient had several rapid cough that followed by inspiratory effort that includes high pitch whoop. Also, the patient confirmed that she haven't received pertosis booster and not an antimicrobial therapy. So, we consider that it is a pertosis and paroxysmal stage. So the pertosis has different stages, which is cataral stage and paroxysmal stage. The cataral stage develops only mild coughing and sneezing. It is highly contagious, but, not, but the patient is not so ill. In the paroxysmal stage, the cough de develops whoop sound upon inhalation. So since our patient already have a high pitch whoop in her cough, so we considered it to be in paroxysmal stage. In clinical tests, it shows that the blood smear has increased WBC count with absolute lymphocytosis. Gram stain, it is gram-negative cocobacilli. The serologic test is IgA positive and IgG positive. So we concluded that the, um, the organism is Bordetella pertosis. And our final diagnosis is pertosis and paroxysmal stage. The organism. Based on the gram staining, it was seen to be that the organism in gram neg is gram-negative cocobacilli associated with upper respiratory tract infection. The organism that needs to be considered are Bordetella pertosis, Chlamydia pneumoniae, Bordetella parapertosis, Haemophilus influenzae, and Mycoplasma pneumoniae. The culture uses Bordet Genko agar, which see, seems colonies are small and shiny and doom pearls. To consider Bordetella pertosis, which is small and shiny and resemble mercury drops. To consider the biochemical reaction, in, bio in biochemical reaction, IMVIC has positive, negative, negative and negative. I am V V C means I means indole, M means methylene red, V means um, um the body telep I the organism is um it is endo positive. It is um negative for methylene red. 
and it is negative for kind of box cross cure or and negative for the citrate. And it is um, positive for the oxidase test. It is positive for catalase test, and it is negative for urease test. So we can now uh, we consider the the above um biochemical bio chemical reaction as um bordetella pertussis, and it since it has um the um similar uh, same um result. So um as um to differentiate the I uh, we we could uh, we include the bordetella parapertosis to to differentiate the two organism. So kanang lain man siya og result since um bortitella parapertosis is oxidase negative, it is catalase positive and urease positive. So we concluded that the organism that have caused the um symptoms that the patient experience which is the whooping cough or the pertosis as caused by the bordetella pertosis organism. Um taxonomy of the bordetella pertosis is um, in domain, it is a bacteria. It, it, in phylum, it is proteobacteria. In class, it is beta proteobacteria, order Burkholderialis, family Alkaligenaceae, genus Bordetella, and species B. Pertosis. Characteristics of the um, characteristic of the Bordetella pertosis is um, it is originally named Hemophilus pertosis. It is gram-negative organism and it appears small, ovoid, cocobacillus, and it is non-motile. It is encapsulated, it is aerobic, and grows optimally at 35 degrees Celsius to 30, 37 degrees Celsius. And it, it, it must attach to host cells to survive. Um, it colonizes the respiratory tract. It, um, its um, symptoms is a whooping cough or pertosis. It is fastidious and slow growing. It requires enriched media such as nicotinamide and charcoal, starch, blood, or albumin to absorb substances. It requires prolonged growth, like um, approximately three to six days. And it is isolated in modified word that gingo agar, which appears mercury drop colonies. Virulence factor um, in adhesins. Um, it is um, as adhesins is um, included the pertosis toxin. Pertosis toxin. Um, it is involved in the adhesion of um, B pertosis to the tracheal epithelium and increases the absolute lymphocyte level in blood. And it also targets the phagocytic cells where it limits the migration of the cells to the site of infection and reduces their phagocytic potential. Um, filamentous hemagglutinin is um, it binds to the C3 ICR3 a receptor present on the surface of the polymorphonuclear leukocytes and which mediates the attachment of B pertosis to the ciliated epithelial cells of the respiratory tract. Also, in adhesins, um, pili and pertactin is included. Um, pili is it binds to the mammalian cells. It anchors B pertosis to the epithelium. Pertactin also, uh, pertactin is helps in providing resistance to clearance of bacteria from the lungs. Also included on the toxins virulence factor is um, adelaide cyclase, or also known as hemolysin toxic. It increases the intracellular level of adenylate cyclase and inhibits, inhibits phagocytic killing and monocyte migration. It also enters the target, target cells and acts as toxin. Um, Dermonecrotic toxin, it causes dose-dependent skin lesion or fatal reactions in, the, in experimental animal model. It has the potent vasoconstrictive activity which can cause death or weight loss due to ischemic lesion or necrosis of the skin. Um, tracheal, tracheal cytotoxin, a peptidoglycan fragment that kills cilia, ciliated respiratory cells and stimulates the release of interleukin which causes fever. Lipopolysaccharide is two distinct lipopolysaccharide molecules with either lipid A or lipid X activates alternate complement pathway and stimulates cytokine release. May also be important in causing damage to the epithelial cells of the upper respiratory tract. And its role in disease is still unknown. Types of Bordetella pertosis. Eight species in the Bordetella gen genus. Three species in this genus are known to be pathogenic to human, which is the B pertosis and B parstosis are very similar species. Um, B bronchiseptica causes respiratory disease in various 
mammals, and occasionally in humans. The human pathology of the remaining five species is relatively unknown. The B. avium and the B. hanzi are known to cause respiratory disease. Gram staining. And gram staining, um, it, it uses, um, it is a um, nasopharyngeal culture using the Bordet ginkgo agar, which um, appears, it's colony, which, which the colonies appears to be um, small and shiny and do doomed pearls. Um, in gram staining, the gram stain smear shows gram negative cocoa bacilli. Um, also in the gram stain, um, Regan, low Regan low charcoal media, it appears young colonies, mercury drops as, as age turn whitish gray and glistening. Other organism that is gram negative coco bacilli included the B. parapertosis. It produces a disease similar to whooping cough, but it is generally less severe. It grows more rapidly than typical B. pertosis and produces larger colonies. Um, it grows on the blood agar and it has a, it has a silent copy of the pertosis toxic gene. The B. Bron bronchiseptica inhabits the respiratory tract of canines in which it may cause kennel cough and pneumonitis. It is responsible for the chronic respiratory tract infections in humans, primarily in individuals with underlying diseases. It grows also on the blood agar medium. The B. Holmesy is a common cause of sepsis. Um, culture and biochemical reactions of the Bordetella pertosis growth on the Mackenzie agar it is um, negative and, and also negative on the sheep blood agar. In the bordet gingo uh, medium, it appears um, mercury drops um, colonies and it grows um, approximately three to four days. It grows, um, growth in the nutrient agar is negative since it is um, um, specific for enriched media, around uh, bordetella pertosis. It grows on the regan low medium, which also appears as mercury drop colonies. It is negative for urease, um, nitrate to nitrite, negative for citrate utilization, negative for gram staining, negative, um, it is non-motile, it is catalase positive, and it is cat um, oxidase positive. So the disease um, that we consider is um, whooping cough or pertosis in, paroxys in the paroxysmal stage. Thank you, everyone. Okay, questions for this group? You have questions? Okay, I'll ask questions. Um, you mentioned about the stages of uh, whooping cough, right? Yes, yes sir. So what do you again decide? It's paroxysmal stage. Yes, sir. What made you decide? It's paroxysmal stage. Um, the respiratory secretions of the patient are highly infectious, and but um, the transmission is the most efficient during the first three weeks as the cough onset, and it is um, it has a. It, the patient also, sir, has a high pitch whoop sound in, in her cough, sir. That is why we uh, concluded it is in the paroxysmal stage, sir. You mentioned about highly infectious. It's the paroxysmal phase and highly infectious in stage. No, sir. It's the cataral stage. Okay. Aside from the symptoms of having a uh, moving cough or hacking cough, made you decide that it is in paroxysmal stage. This um, is one of the hallmark, no? Why it is in the paroxysmal stage based on the laboratory results. It is in, uh, we decided that the pertosis has been in paroxysmal stage already sir given that uh the it is already five weeks when the patient uh received physical examination also there is absolute lymphocytosis as seen in the laboratory result which is 
uh, an increase in WBC, an effect caused by one of the toxins of Bordetella pertosis. Okay. Um, what's the normal WBC count, Be? You're done with HEMA. What's the normal lymphocytic count? The normal WBC count in blood is about 4,500 to 11,000 uh, per microliter, sir. How about lymphocyte? Um, um, it, um, the normal lymphocyte range, sir, is um, between 1,000 and 4,800 uh, 4, lymphocytes in every one micrometer. One microliter of blood, sir. Okay. Um, that is why, class, in this type of um, infection, no, it's cons some um, some doctors misdiagnose this as leukemic patients because it may mimic leukemoid reactions. Am I right? Because absolute lymphocytosis is common among leukemia patients. Okay. You didn't mention about um, treatment and prevention. Have you read about treatment and prevention? Yes, sir. Uh, the yes, sir. The, the treatment for Bordetella pertosis are those. Uh, in group of microlide antibiotics like erythromycin and prevention there is actually available vaccines which is uh, DTAP and TTAP it's a combination vaccine for against diphtheria tetanus or lockjaw and a cellular pertosis okay How will you differentiate? You mentioned about three species, the ba of Bordetella pertosis. How will you differentiate these three species from each other? You go back good sa katong um, three species. Na slide. There. Asa na to siya? Katong isa, I think, katong better, katong na ibrong ko, septeka. It's pili class, ha? It's not pili. And it's bog proskauer. Okay. How will you differentiate parapertosis, bronchoseptica, and pertosis? Which is motel among the three? Per parapertosis, bronchoseptica, or pertosis? Um, um, motel, sir, is some parapertosis, sir. Um, to differentiate the, no, the three, um, the Bordetella species, sir, is that the Bordetella pertosis, I, Bordetella pertosis is, um, it's, ano, uh, magkosia, bitag whooping cough, sir, or severe, severe cough, while the parapertosis is mild lang siyang a form of, um, pertosis. And, sub, and, and, um, bronchiseptica, is, um, it is a um, respiratory disease of animals, sir, like pigs and dogs. Okay. Let's go to biochemical reaction. How will you differentiate this three common Bordetella species? You mentioned that Bordetella pertosis is motile and negative in your result there. I'm sorry, Dr. Ekanang, but Bordetella parapertosis is um, non-motile. Only the Bordetella bronchiseptica is um, motile, sir. 
among okay. the three species. What else? How will you differentiate Bordetella bronchoseptica from or another differentiation? How about the oxidase uh, tests and urease tests? Um, in oxidase test, test sir, is um, both positive ang Bordetella parapertosis and Bordetella bronchoseptica. And also for the Bordet um, gingo medium, um, di ba ang Bordetella parapertosis is mo mag-grow siya for um, approximately 3 to 6 days pa siya mag-grow. While the um, Bordetella parapertosis is mag-grow siya 1 to 2 days, within 1 to 2 days. And the uh, Bordetella bronchoseptica is mag-grow siya tanang, within 1 day ra, sir. Okay. What else? Erase test. And in urease test, sir, kay negative ang um, bordetella pertosis and both positive ang um, parapertosis o ang um, bronchiseptica. Okay. Repeat it again, again. Um, both positive. Motility and oxidase. Go. Ay, okay, sir. Um, sa ure, oh, in the oxidase, um, test, sir, kay ka ng positive ang kanang bordetella pertosis and also the parapertosis. Well, si bronchiseptica is negative for oxidase test, sir. Okay, mali, mali. Grand, sir, the catalase is for positive for B pertosis and parapertosis. Kinsa ang oxidase test positive? Oxidase test positive for B pertosis and B bronchioseptica. Bronchioseptica. Oh, Ganun na sabi niyo, pertosis and parapertosis. Again, class oxidase positive is your pertosis and your bronchioseptica. Your parapertosis is negative for oxidase. For urease, only your, bronch only your pertosis is negative. For bronchoseptica and parapertosis, that is positive for urease enzyme. And among the three, only your bronchoseptica is motile. The two are non-motile. Okay. And among the three, only your pertosis will not grow on ship's blood agar. Bronchoseptica and parapertosis can grow or can um, able to grow in your on blood agar plate. Okay, I'll ask questions for the class. Is butter na around? Crystal? Present, sir. Okay. What's the ideal specimen for portosis um, diagnosis? What is the ideal specimen? Nasopharyngeal swab, sir. Nasopharyngeal swab. Which swab? Which type of swab we will use? Synthetic, sir. Synthetic? Yes, sir. Can you name the specific swab, synthetic swab? What's the component of that synthetic swab? Ducron or calcium alginate, sir. Why don't we use cotton tip swab? Because it contains fiber, sir. It contains fiber? Yes, sir. Are you sure? Yes, sir. Tama, reporters? Does your, does, is that the correct reason why do we, do we, don't we need to use the cotton tip swab? Cotton swab or flux, uh, flux swabs are maybe used. However, they have not been validated for PCR or 
polymerase chain reaction for culture of vapor ptosis. Calcium malogenate swabs with aluminum shafts are also not recommended, sir, because for, polymer for polymerase chain reaction, since they may inhibit the polymer polymerase enzyme in PCR detection. And cotton swab may be inhibitory to specimen growth and are not recommended to. That is why nasopharyngeal swab in rayon or dacron swabs on plastic shaft and aspirase are the two types of samples primarily used for pertosis because the pathogen B pertosis colonizes the ciliated epithelial cells of upper respiratory tract. You mentioned about um, toxic, your cotton, cotton cap swab are toxic, right? To the inhib or inhibits the growth of your organism. What's the component there of your cotton tip swab? Okay, this is a review of your basic um, learnings sa specimen collection. What's the component of your cotton tip swab? These are made up of Dacron, are... sir? Huh? Uh, Dacron? No. Your cotton tip swab is different from your Dacron swabs. Your cotton tip swabs are, be... are usually made up of Fatty acids, am I right? And these fatty acids, diba, you mentioned kanina in your presentations, are growth inhibitors to your organisms. So, you will not use cotton tip swab because it will inhibit the growth. And these are also toxic to most of the um, microorganisms. Another question. Fuentes, Duvisa. Yes, sir. Which cytotoxin is responsible for the killing of cilia? Again, sir. Which cytotoxin released by the organism that is responsible of killing cilia? You mentioned it, Kanina, if you listen. Tracheal cytotoxin, sir. Tracheal cytotoxin. What's the action the eye of your cilia in your own understanding? It sweeps the mucus and bacteria away. The cilia. So, how does the microorganism, what's the action of your tracheal cytotoxin? What's the action of your tracheal cytotoxin? Enter. It releases interleukin 1, paralyzing the cilia. What's the effect of interleukin 1? Aside from uh, paralyzing the cilia. What's the manifestation, clinical manifestation? They mentioned it kanina. It leads to fever, sir. Okay. Kamu, kaya dinibid mo magmaminaw sa inyong classmates. Bot na lang ninyo mga alak kung dira sa inyong kuha na. Ang sige pa mong search, search dira. Okay, another question. From 4... 
Carupo, oh no, they're the reporter. Cortez, Brianna. Yes, sir. Diba, the, the ideal specimen is nasopharyngeal swab. Yes, sir. Whenever you cannot process it, no? Or if the specimen is collected at the physician's clinic, what is the ideal transport medium? APM, sir. Amy's. What is the composition of Amy's? What is present or what component is present in Amy's transport medium that will help facilitate the growth of the organism? Magnesium, sir. Phosphorus. What is Amy's trans Amy's trans APM stands for Amy's transport medium. So, ano yung nasa Amy's transport medium ang pwede na maging support no or protector ni microorganism charcoal sir okay charcoal charcoal again class diba kanina sa ilang presentation charcoal is considered as growth protector for the organism okay give at least two selective culture medium for the isolation of this organism Oi, Cortez. Ay, ako, sir. Yes. Ko answer. Um, katong Regan Low. And? Regan Low of Jones Kendrick Charcoal. As the result of Jones, what? To the component of your Jones Kendrick Charcoal. How can you try charcoal? How answer, sir? You mentioned about Jones Kendrick Charcoal, right? Yes, sir. What makes it become selective? Mm. It contains. It contains um starch, sir. Starch. Take from that. Um, cephalexin. Very good. It's cephalexin antibiotic. Okay. Last question, reporter. What's the essence of detecting IgA and IgG antibodies? Um, for um antibody testing, sir, it is um um kwan ay kanang di ba the patient is positive for IgA and IgG. For the positive uh, for IgG for IgA positive, sir, is kanang kwan siya ay antibody to perto it is IgA antibody to um pertosis detected which may indicate a current or past exposure to the B pertosis and also the positive of um IgG is um it is indicative of a current or recent exposure or immunization to B pertosis sir but your patient does not have any prior immunization di ba Yes, sir. So why is it na positive siya for IgG? Ano man daw ba? Okay. Does IgG present class during recent infection? Yes, sir. I can ang di I recent exposure, sir. Recent exposure. Not yes, then ang IgA is past. Past. Past na exposure. Yes, sir. Are you sure? Try to review that again. 
Okay. I will not be strict on that since I don't I know that you don't have IES, but you need to read it again. Which immunoglobulin class is for recent infection and which immunoglobulin is for pass or that will give we that will yield no a better antibodies towards um, convalescent stages. Okay. Actually, their patient class is padulong na na siya sa, sa to convalescent stage. Kaya na naman siya IgG. Okay? Okay, let's um, review, no? Short review of the um, case. So, the case is... Uh, okay, go, balik. So, this is a 20-year-old case, no? The patient experienced um, hawking cough for uh, approximately five weeks already. So she intended to go to um, hospital because she already experienced terrible coughing and shortness of breath. So on his, uh, on her, check uh, physical examination. It revealed um, pitch poof, high pitch poof cough. Vital signs are normal. Temperature are, temperatures are usually normal. Um, then pulse rate, respiratory rate. The patient, based on the patient's symptoms, the resident physician already suspect that the patient is having whooping cough. No, so in order to um, give a definitive diagnosis, the physician ordered complete blood count, nasopharyngeal culture, and chest X-ray. So. On the complete blood count, it reveals absolute lymphocytosis. And again, plus absolute lymphocytosis is only seen no, during paroxysmal phase or in between catarrhal phase going to paroxysmal phase. And absolute lymphocytosis will not give you a definitive diagnosis because absolute lymphocytosis is also seen in mga some leukemoid reaction and other um, infections. So, the absolute lymphocytosis is usually noted during acute pertosis or acute woofing cough only. Then, the culture, the culture is, al is always the gold standard in diagnosing infectious diseases. So, again, ide um, the ideal specimen should be nasopharyngeal swab and it should be collected on a Dacron and Ryan swab, not on a cotton tip swab. Because again, your cotton tip swab contains fatty acids that is toxic to the organism. So it may, it, it also um, a growth inhibitors to your organism, including your metal ions, mga sulfides, mga peroxides. So those are growth inhibitors. Okay. So in case that the organism is um, not plated or not cultured right away, so meaning you'll be collecting it at a physician's clinic, no? hindi mo siya ma-plate directly to a culture media plate, then you will use a transport medium that contains charcoal. No? Because charcoal, um, blood, and starch will help or will protect the organism from um, any exposure to drying balloon or to um, other organisms. So, the gram stain of the urinasopharyngeal swab, usually class in the laboratory, wala talaga tayong ginagawa na gram stain for nasopharyngeal swab. So, the nasopharyngeal swab, um, gram stain revealed gram negative coco bacilli. And on a board at Gango Agar, it reveals um, mercury drops. So, the characteristics, remember, mercury drops, gani, pag makabasag mercury drops, always think of board at alapertosis. Next slide, please. So again, there are three stages of um, bordetella pertosis. You have the catarrhal stage, the paroxysmal stage, and the convalescent stage. So the catarrhal stage, that is the highly um, infectious stage, no, in which the patient will experience low-grade fever, um, Meron ding mga episodes of coughing but not pronounced. The patient will also experience rhinorrhea. No? Then, after two to four weeks from catarrhal phase, it will go to paroxysmal phase. So, during this phase, class, ito na yung episode na tinatawag na may wolf pink cough na si patient. Okay? 
So at yung pro, yung coughing episodes niya is very pronounced unlike during your catarrhal phase. Then after 1 to 3 weeks from paroxysmal phase, the patient will undergo convalescent phase. So sa convalescent phase magde-decline na naman yung episodes of coughing. So the convalescent state phase usually stays for a period of 6 months. Next slide. So there, um, they consider you no know, different organisms, and then they ruled out um, organisms based on culture and biochemical reactions. Okay, so for Bordetella, again, you have three most common species, Parapertosis, Pertosis, and Bronchoseptica. So how do you differentiate the three using different biochemical tests? For motility, only bronchiseptica is motil, parapertosis and pertosis are non-motil. For oxidase test, um, only parapertosis is negative for oxidase, but bronchiseptica and pertosis are positive for oxidase. For urease test, only um, pertosis is negative for urease, while your Bronchiseptica and your parapertosis are positive for urease test. Okay. So for treatment of choice, usually you will give macrolides like erythromycin. No? And with which erythromycin class will help no um lessen the growth of your parapertosis sa trachea. Then, management or treat, uh, prevention in management, there is available vaccine for pertosis. So, in the form of DTAP or TDAP, you know, which was mentioned by your classmates. Okay. Any questions? By the way, the common name of your um, Bordetella pertosis is Bordet Gengo Bacillus. Any questions? Clarifications. Wala. Okay, so let's proceed to the next case. Thank you, group one. Let's proceed to the next case. Now prepare pa, sir. Wait, wait. Good morning, everyone. We are here to present case five, focusing on gastro gastrointestinal infection. Here we have the flow of our presentation. The case. A 60-year-old woman was referred to a gastro gastroenterologist due to consistent com discomfort and weight loss. She said she had a teary stool in, er in the early mor morning, which she had never experienced before. She presented with a two-month history of burning pain in the epigastric abdomen and chest, which radiated toward her back. 
Her pain worsened after taking aspirin and drinking coffee and was relieved after taking antacids. She had previously lost 12 pounds in two months due to increased intake caused by a feeling of bloating and stomach aches between meals. She also reported doubling her NSAID intake due to increased joint pain. During her visit, vital signs were measured and revealed as follows. Blood pressure, 135 over 85 millimeter mercury. Temperature, 36.4 degrees Celsius. Heart rate, 99 beats per minute. And oxygen saturation, 99%. More so, she reveal, revealed she was diagnosed with gastritis five years ago, but resolved with pharmacotherapy. She also had a heart attacks two months ago and has started taking aspirin since then. She was diagnosed with diabetes mellitus and hypertension six years ago. From an early age, she worked as a sales manager in a private company. She had a history of smoking for 20 years and was an occasional drinker. She's fond of eating spicy foods and chocolates when she's bored. Based on the patient's symptom and history, the physician requested an esophagogastrodinoscopy or EGD. Vac um, vacuum assisted biopsy of the antral portion of the stomach was consistent with moderate gastritis. No tumor was seen. In addition, the biopsy demonstrated significant growth of bacterial organisms. The physician also performed a non-invasive test, a urea breath test on the patients, and turns out to be positive. Here we have a, an image of the endoscopic biopsy. The first um, um, image A, we have the numerous bacteria between fovular epithelial cells. And image B, the arrowhead represents the causative agent. The arrow represents the neutrophil, and the stars represents the eosinophil. Here, um, next, we have the patient's general information. She is a 60-year-old um, woman. Next, we have the subjective and objective information. The chief complaint is the epigastric pain in the abdomen and the chest. The other symptoms, we have tori stool, feeling of bloating and stomach aches between meals, weight loss, and increased joint pain. The history of, of the patient's present illness, we have um, two months prior to admission, the patient was uh, um, suffered from epigastric pain in the abdomen and chest. She also lost 12 pounds in two months due to increased intake caused by a feeling of bloating and stomach aches between meals. And she also suffered an increased joint pain. The patient's past medical history, she was diagnosed with gastritis five years ago. She had heart attacks two months ago. She was also diagnosed with diabetes mellitus and hypertension six years ago. So for our patient's family history, it was undisclosed. So for our patient's social and drug history, um, in her social history, he has a history of smoking 20 years, and she is an occasional drinker, and she is fond of eating spicy foods and chocolate when she is bored. So for our patient's drug history, he has a, she has a history of taking aspirin due to her two previous heart attacks in the past. She also has a history in taking antacids due to burning pain in her epigastric abdomen and chest. She also has a history of taking NSAID or non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs due to the increasing joint pain. And lastly, pharmacotherapy due to her past gastritis five years ago. So for our patient's comorbidities, she has diabetes mellitus and hypertension. So for her physical examinations, um, the patient's blood pressure is 135 over 85 mmHg, temperature of 36.4 degrees Celsius, heart rate of 99 beats per minute, and O2 saturation of 99%. So the tests 
done um, on, on the patient is biopsy test, which is an invasive type of test, which is the esophageal gastroduodenoscopy, a biopsy of the antral portion of the stomach. The test involves an endoscope, a lighted camera on the end of the tube, which is passed down your throat to visualize your esophagus, stomach, and duodenum. So another test um, conducted is the non-invasive test, urea breath test, a test to detect helicobacter pylori, wherein it, um, the patient is to swallow a capsule containing small amount of C14 urea with small cup of water. After three minutes, you will be given another small cup of water to drink. And after seven minutes, you'll blow into the balloon or bag, which the doctor will send to a lab after testing. So the pertinent labs. The bacteria is gram-negative bacilli. For the biopsy test results, significant growth of bacterial organisms um, were shown in between foveolar epithelial cells, the gustative agent, which is Helicobacter pylori. There are also neutrophils and eosinophils. So for the differential diagnosis, the chief complaint is consistent discomfort, weight loss, burning pain in the epigastric abdomen. So this this so this these symptoms are under gastro gastrointestinal infection. So for the disease to be considered are peptic ulcer, gastritis, and stomach cancer. It also undergo an invasive test, which is the esophago gastrodonoscopy or EGT test, which is consistent with moderate gastritis, no tumor was seen, and significant growth of bacterial organisms. The patient also undergoes a urea breath test, which is the non-invasive test, and for the Final diagnosis is acute gastritis for its positive. For the organism, the gram-negative bacteria are causes gastritis. So the organisms to be considered are Helicobacter pylori, Eritrechia coli, and, and Helicobacter cinidae. It also undergo an AGD test, which is positive for bacterial growth, neutrophils, eosinophils, and no tumor was seen, a moderate gastritis. The patient also undergo the urea breath test, which is positive. So for the organism, the only positive for the urea breath test is the Helicobacter pylori. For the taxonomy of Helicobacter pylori, domain is bacteria, phylum belongs to proteobacteria, class is Epsilon proteobacteria, the order is, Pam is Pampilobacteralis. For the family, is it belongs to family Helicobacteriaceae. For the genus, is Helicobacter. And for the species, is Helicobacter pylori. For the characteristics, Helicobacter pylori is, is, is helical or, or spiral shaped gram, gram negative rod with and also characterized by micro and also characterized with micro aerophilic, which means they only need small amount of oxygen for them to grow. It is also motile with four to six polar flagella, giving it a rapid corks growth motility, and also has a strong urease activity. For the virulence factors, one important virulence factor for Helicobacter pylori is the production of urease. Why? Since Helicobacter pylori produces an enzyme, urease, it hydrolyzes urea, forming ammonia, which neutralizes the stomach pH. We also have the CAG-A or cytotoxin-associated gene A which is a protein produced by Helicobacter pylori, which is responsible for disrupting the cellular integrity and structure. And also, a VAC-A or 
Bacuolating cytotoxin A, which is a toxin secreted by Helicobacter pylori, which enhances the ability of the bacteria to colonize the stomach and contributes to the pathogenesis of gastric car carcinoma and peptic ulcer disease. And also, flagella. The flagellar motility contributes to bacterial pathogenesis by promoting bacterial host interactions, biofilm formation, adherence, and invasion. And also the peptoglycan, which allows the generation of helical shape to facilitate colonization. And lastly is the lepopolysaccharide, which adheres to host cell receptors. So about the culture, Helicobacter pylori grows best at 37 degrees Celsius in a microaerophilic environment. So for the media, blood auger grows best at 37 degrees, but I mean, growth is best on blood auger and solid auger after incubation four to five days. Colonies are circular, convex, and translucent, and grow bigger than two millimeters in diameter. On Columbia blood auger, they give small, dome shaped translucent and sometimes weakly hemolytic colonies on modified columbia urea agar they give small middle size rounded and creamy color colonies change in the color of the slant mcua tube from orange to pink on marshall's brain heart infusion medium along with vancomycin nalidixic acid and amphotericin give the sweet dome-shaped colonies. On egg yolk emulsion agar, they give large and red color colony against yellow background. So this is the picture of day culture of Helicobacter pylori on bad agar. Colonies of Helicobacter pylori on chocolate agar. Colonies on egg yolk in emulsion agar. And Helicobacter pylori on Columbia blood agar. So for the biochemical reactions, the test for catalase is positive. Ca test for oxidase is positive. Urease test is positive. Microaerophilic growth at 37 degrees Celsius is positive. Gram staining is gram negative rod and spiral. Motility is model. For the treatment, the treatment for Helicobacter, the treatment for the treatment for Helicobacter pylori is the triple drug therapy, which is the proton pump inhibitor. And an example of this is omeprazole, and also associated with two antibiotics, which are loritromycin and metronidazole. For the quadruple drug therapy, for the for the mucosal protective agent, we have the bismuth subsalicylate and, and also associated with two antibiotics, which are metronidazole and tetracycline. Thank you. Okay, do you have any questions for this group? Any questions? Wala? Okay. Based on your patient's um, history, I have questions, ha? Based on your patient's history, what is what, or what are the risk factors why your patient develops acute gastritis? Again, sir. What do you think the risk factors why your organism develop gastritis? Or why your patient develop gastritis? Diba, as you said kanina, helicobacter pylori may be part of the um, mama flora. But this will only arise from patients. 
So, what I'm going to do is after. I think I got back. Oh. What are these risk factors you know, that can lead to gastritis? Acute gastritis, sir. Um, the acute gastritis is caused by the irritation due to her use of certain medications such as aspirin, antacids, NSAID, and other anti-inflammatory drugs. She is also um, fond of eating spicy food and chocolate. What else? She is also an occasional drinker and, and has a... She is also a smoker, sir. This of smoking for 20 years. So these are the risk factors why your patient is prone to gastritis? Yes, sir. Um, next. Can you um, elaborate, not elaborate, but can you simplify the pathogenesis of your organism? Pathogen you about toxins, right? So can you simplify that portion so that your classmate will know how the organisms um, from urease, you no know, production of urease, going to the destruction of the lining epithelium which causes ulcer this one i want you to simplify this so that your classmate will have an idea next time class on the succeeding reports if you want to um introduce virulence factor and try to explain virulence factor it would be better if you show us um chart or schematic diagram how these virulence factor no um, affects the immune system or the lining epithelium baron of the human para para ma visualize po sa inyong classmates kay magsige na mugyaw ya erase change blah 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 so at least but there, pic there is picture para ma Kita sa sa inyong classmate and sa inyong nahitabok sa inyong giyaw-yaw. Okay. Again, go back. Reporters, try to simplify this one. Because these virulence factors are the cycle also of how the organism causes disease. Okay. For the first virulence factors, which is the production of the enzyme urease, um, the bacteria, which is Helicobacter pylori, will produce an enzyme called urease, in which it hydrolyzes urea, forming ammonia. Since an ammonia is alkaline man, mag, mag neutralize siya sa stomach pH. So, mauna na, kaya niya mag live sa stomach, which is which is an stomach kay acidic man. Next is the CAD A or cytotoxin associated gene A. It is a protein produced by Helicobacter pylori, which is responsible for disrupting the cellular integrity and structure of the bacteria, I mean of the cells. Then, then for the BAC A or baculitating cytotoxin A, is also a toxin which is secreted by Helicobacter pylori which enhances the ability of the bacteria to colonize the stomach and contributes to the pathogenesis of gastric adenocarcinoma and peptic ulcer disease. And, anod and another virulence factor is the flagella. Since Helicobacter pylori is is a is a flagellated bacteria it uses its flagellar motility to contribute to bacterial pathogenesis by promoting bacteria host interactions biofilm formation adherence and invasion then the pepto then the peptoglycan 
which allows the generation of, of the helical shape to facilitate colonization. And lastly, the lepopolysaccharide, which, allow, which adhere to host cell receptors. So that's all, sir. Okay, gets class. Wala. Okay, let's try to, I'll try to, ano ha, uh, start a new whiteboard. Creating a job. Hindi lang ako ba naman sa kong pagkuhan. Pag may ko whiteboard. Okay, hindi na lang. Okay. Um, ang may tabo class, di ba? First, the organism contains um, urease enzyme. So, di ba the pH of your um, stomach is usually acidic. So, the organism class, no? Um, has the ability to survive because of the urease enzyme. Okay, so the organisms try to convert, no, try to protect the himself from the, ano, from the gastric acidity, because it will try to alkalinize, no, the environment. So once ma alkalinize na niyang environment, di ba, the organism has flagella and the flagella description of your helicobacter pylori is lupotrichate so there is tough flagella at one end so the flagella class will help the organism adhere and also will help the organism to for chemotaxis na activity to colonize the mucosa of the stomach so once maato na siya sa stomach class diba the organism contains Kag A and Bak A. Si Kag A, ang buhato ni Kag A class, di ba, your lining epithelium sa stomach kay tight, mag na ang junction. So, ang buhato ni Kag A, iyan ni gubon ang tight junction. So, maguba na na siya. So, the Kag A will destroy the tight junction. no And once ma-destroy na niya ang tight junction, Si VAC A naman, iyang buhaton is iyang mag-form siya vacuole sa mga type, sa mga na-destroy ng junction. And once there is vacuole class, di ba, your um, stomach contains acid. So katong acid, musulod na siya sa imuhang lining epithelium. So muna makafeel ka nga, there is makafeel na kag hyperacidity, kay imuhang lining epithelium, kay naguba naman. Okay, so if there is acidity and then musulod na dito, imuhang acid, musulod na po si organism sa mucosa. So once maabot sa siya sa mucosa, sa submucosa, di ba, sa submucosa, daghan man ng mga cells, mga inflammatory cells. So once there is inflammatory cells, so mga, there is reaction na mahitabo, mga cytokines, inflammations, muna na na, na kay ulcerations kay it will lead to apoptosis naman okay so from the stomach pwede na buhato ni um, organism until sa duodenum duodenum ni mo sa small intestine okay because of the organism's capability to swim because of the flagella and also to live on the stomach because of the urease enzyme okay What is the ano pala um, the mode of transmission? What's the mode of transmission? Yes, sir, person to person or huh? or through saliva then vomit. Through saliva vomit and stool. So, oral, oral, and fecal, oral route. Am I right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So, what are the different tests on how do you diag how on diagnosing this type of infection? Mm 
By using the EGD, sir, and urea breath test, sir. Digi the EGD and urea breath test? Yes, sir. EGD is an invasive EGD. test, right? Yes, sir. And urea breath test is not invasive. Yes, sir. Can you give me how the patient or the principal no, of your urea breath test? What's the principle of urea breath test? How is this done to the patient? Um, the patient is to swallow, sir, a capsule that contains a C14 urea, sir. And then after three minutes, it will be um, another will be given another small cup of water to drink, sir. And after seven minutes, need to blow the, uh, no, the patient will need to blow into the balloon, sir. Then the test result for your again. Then if it if it turns out positive, sir, then unsa man ang measure sa imong patient is urea breath test. Carbon dioxide, sir. Okay. So what will happen, class? Basically, is the patient will um, try to swallow a labeled carbon labeled urea, tama ko? Yes, sir. So in the in the stomach, so if the if it contains um, Helicobacter pylori, so that will be converted into ammonia, ammonia, tama, and CO two. Yes, sir. And that CO2 class, eh, diba? CO2 man siya, so it will be um, transported to respiratory route to the heart, from the stomach, from stomach to heart, then to lungs. Diba? Since this is labeled, um, labeled carbon dioxide, so once the patient will try to breathe out, the CO2, dapat ang katong labeled na CO2 nga iyang gikaon class, dapat makita to siya sa card. Card ba? Or the balloon? I think it's, in some, it's card. Dang some to balloon. Yes, sir. Balloon, sir. Okay. So, dapat ang katong yung gikaon nga labeled nga carbon class, dapat makita ragya punto siya after several hours sa imuhang breath no um kay patient mo na siya ang one way of um diagnosing but the urine class will not be affected by the urea ha so there is unchanged urea in urine when we perform say urea breath test okay but still what's the um, your urea breath test class is considered sensitive and specific, no? Um, if ever wala sila makita yapon sa urea, but pas in their invasive testing like um, duodenal aspirate, no, or mga tissue biopsy, ang first thing nila buhaton class kay mag urea test. So they will try to um, get the biopsy and then try to drop urea. Um, stain, urea stain, and then if mo pink gani siya, then it will give eventually a presumptive diagnosis kay doctor nga possible for gastritis or gastric um, ulcer. Okay. Because culture class in the Philippines for Helicobacter pylori is not usually done. Ang, gina, ang ginahimo usually sa hospital for Helicobacter, for mga gastritis patients is tool. Um, antigen. So, na naman tayo mga serologic assays for detection of um, H. pylori using stool antigen. Okay. I'll ask questions to your classmates.
Kenon Muriel, are you around? Sure. The organism is microaerophilic. Am I right? Yes, sir. What is microaerophilic? What is microaerophilic? Microaerophilic or a microorganism that requires environments containing lower levels of the oxygen that are present in the atmosphere, sir. So, if the organism contains uh, or the organism is exposed to higher in higher um, concentration of oxygen mamatay sila yes sir mamatay siya sir can you give another organism that is microphilic like from helicobacter Sir, E. coli, sir, or all kinds of Campylobacter jejuni. What's the um, disease associated with your Campylobacter? Answer. If you read your notes, you have by Aquis later. This is a topic for today. Ang Campylobacter, di ba? Topic siya sa karun ng week. Your Campylobacter often causes which this which type of infection? Gastroenteritis. Sir. Ay, gastroenteritis. Gastroenteritis. Sir. Enteritis. Enteritis. Ay, enteritis. Sir. Sorry, sir. Amo, ha? Uy. You should learn how to read it properly, ha? Sa mga medical students, baya mo, mo good. Mawawan ta, if ever, mo ato na mo sa inyo ang mag-internship na mo. Next question. Um, Nika, is he dito? Are you around? Yes, sir. Okay. What's the principal again, virulence factor of the organism? in which this virulence factor is vital in the survival and growth of the organism in the gastric mucosa? Answer, ureas. Huh? Ureas. Yeah. Are you sure with your answer? Yes, sir. Urea? Yes. It's not urea. Boris? Huh? It's not urea. Is urea, urea a balance factor, reporters? Boris? Huh? Again. No, sir. It's, what's the correct word? Yuris. Yuris. Again. Again, Nika? Yuris. Yuris. Urea is part of the urea is just a product of the virulence fact of your of the enzyme. Diba? Mm. Then um another question. Aside from Urea. What are the two cytotoxins released by your organism? Nika. Cancer. Tag A. Tag A P. Huh? And. Tag A. Okay. What does Tag A do? 
Tag ito'y buhat ni Kag A. Destroy, ayun, destroy the tight junction. Ang si Bak A. Si Bak A. Kuan. Through those vacuoles. Or create. Create. Create what? Vacuoles. Next student, um, Uy, Cleofin. Yes, sir. Describe the flagella of your Helicobacter pylori. Hello, hello. Uh, the flagella is metal, sir, four to six. Lopotrichos, sir. What is lopotrichos? Okay, now, one flagella sa one answer. Sa polar answer. One flagella? So one end lang, sir. Four to six flagella located at one pole of the bacterial cell, sir. So, dili siya one flagella? Uh oh, multiple flagella, sir. Sorry, sir. Masayap lang, sir. Sa one end lang, food, sir. Okay. It's a tough flagella, no? A group of flagella at one end. Yes, sir. Tama? Yes. Uh, oh, sir. Okay. Aside from motility, what's the action or what's the function of flagella of your Helicobacter pylori? Cleofin. Answer, can chemotaxis activity, sir? Okay. Can oh. adherence and invasion, sir? Sa hoster. Thank you. Next. Thank you, sir. Uh, Andes Abigail. Sir. Okay. What's the primary habitat of your organism? Answer, the human gastric mucosa. And this is found primarily, if ever it attaches, it primarily found on which part of the stomach? Antrum, think, sir. Antrum. Huh? Antrum? Uh, ay, wait lang. Uh, it is found in the duod, uh, duodenum stomach, sir. Huh? Judenum stomach? I joke. <laughs> Judenum is not part of your stomach, ha? Huh? Oh, sir. In intestine it's... dito. Kaan, sir? Kanang antrum. Okay, it's antrum and fundus portion of the stomach, which is the okay, mucous sir. layer of your stomach. What's the... <coughs> Ideal specimen of choice, Abigail. The ideal specimen of choice, sir, is the biopsy specimen, sir. Which biopsy? Should be specific. Gas, uh, gas, uh, stomach tissue, sir. Okay, your gastric biopsy. Okay. Yes, sir. So again, let's um, do a recap. No, the patient's of final diagnosis is acute catheritis, which is correct. No, which um, caused by Helicobacter pylori. Again, Helicobacter pylori. This is a 
non-motile uh, motile organism by a lupotrichus flagella and um, it has a strong urease activity which um, protects the organism and help the organism survive in the gastric mucosa in which we all know that the gastric mucosa is acidic in nature in which this acidity is brought to you by your parietal cells tama so um tapa. the organism helicobacter pylori is also microaerophilic in nature and when you do gram stain this is gram negative um rods no which also resembles like your campylobacter species kasi the same lang sila or related lang sila na order so um mode of transmission is oral oral or oral fecal route so your helicobacter pylori again is the major cause of your gastritis peptic ulcer and even your gastric carcinoma so the primary habitat of your um, helicobacter pylori is human gastric mucosa and it only appears to be uh, to cause infection if risk factors are present you no know, if ever there are changes of the immune defenses so yun so tapa. um the virulence factors includes your urease tama urease um cog a vac a flagella lipoligosaccharides and peptidoglycan so urease, convert urea to ammonia and carbon dioxide, again, in order for the organism to live. Cog A, um, destroy the tight junctions of the lining epithelium, back A promotes baculations. Um, flagella helps the organism um, to be motile as well. It helps the organism for chemotaxis and also it helps the organism to adhere to the lining epithelium. The peptidoglycan and lipooligosaccharides also helps the organism for adherence. Okay, so for culture medium, aside from uh, your culture medium, Skiro culture medium is one of the selective culture medium for Helicobacter pylori. Um, tapa. Hero, okay. So take note of the of the um, temperature class. Ha, it's at 37. It grows best at 37 degrees Celsius. So, if there are questions and how you um, differentiate Helicobacter from uh, Campylobacter, the number one you should look into is the result of urease. So, never get na may urease positive si Campylobacter, urease positive si Helicobacter lang yun. Okay. Questions. And your Campylobacter, by the way, grows best at 42 degrees Celsius, while your Helicobacter pylori grows best at 35, 37 degrees Celsius. Okay. Um, treatment of choice. Treatment of choice will be um, combination therapy. Am I right, reporters? So, yes, sir. It's a combination therapy of bismuth and antibiotics. Bismuth salt and antibiotics. Tama ko? Yes, sir. Okay. So, that's it. If you have questions, raise it now. Clarifications. Okay, if none, you can take your lunch. Have a great day, everyone, and thank you for coming. Thank you so much, sir. There is question. Thank you, sir. Ay, sir, you, sir. Ay, thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Our exam later will be 2 to 3.30. Okay, sir. Okay. I will post the, the link via um, Google Classroom. So if you don't have question, thank you so much, everyone, for coming and enjoy the rest of the day. See you next week. You will still have laboratory next week. Thank you, sir. Hi, everyone. Thank, thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir.